In response to the armed conflict and escalating humanitarian crisis in northeast Nigeria that has left over one million girls and boys in need of educational support, Education Cannot Wait Today announced uh, $20.1 million in catalytic investment grants to accelerate the response to the protracted crisis. The initial program will run for three years with the goal of leveraging an additional $98.7 million in co-financing from national and global partners, the private sector and philanthropic foundations to reach over 2.9 million children and youth. Poverty remains one of the greatest barriers to educational access and parents simply cannot afford to send their children to school. Uh, COVID-19 has made matters even worse. Now, um, Obiese Kwesili, a former presidential candidate, human rights activist, and convener of Bring Back Our Girls, joins us now. Good evening, Dr. Obiese Kwesili. Um, it's good to have you on Newsnight. Hello. Now, uh, yeah, good. Uh, let's start where we're supposed to start. A lot of Nigerians are saying congratulations to the federal government and to all Nigerians, primarily because all the children that were captured, kidnapped, and taken away have all been rescued or have, have, have been freed one way or the other. Because even the general that was here said uh, it was rescue operation, but there are conflicting reports about negotiation. What is the thought going through your mind, knowing how you have fought as much as possible with regards to the girls of Chibok? What is on your mind when you look at the response we've had to this and the response we had to the Chibok girls' uh, capture or abduction as it is? So um, as a human being, the first thing that um, I did was really be so filled with joy for the children and for their parents, because you, you don't want to see this happen to any family. I was just so full of joy to know that those children were not going to be away for long. Um, but on the case of this re repetitive pattern, where Chiba girls were abducted, 112 of them are still missing, where Leah Charibu was abducted along with 109 other Dapchi girls. 105 of them returned. She was held back as a prisoner of fate because she refused to convert to Islam. And this is two years since Leah Charibu. This is six years since the 112 Chibo girls. And the same country now tells the world that another tranche of school children were cutted off from their school boarding house. You know, the world just looks at us. And the only quote that I can remember is that of Mandela, that there's no keener way to reveal the, this, a society's soul than to just watch how it treats its children. Nigeria does not treat children well. For it to be that those children were taken away, <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> in the readings, I saw that there is actually a military outpost some 60 kilometers away. They successfully took those children away. Exactly the same kind of question that we asked when Chibok girls were abducted. The same kind of question that we asked when Dabchi girls were abducted. Because these children are abducted in states that are already high security zones. So their vulnerability to this kind of a, a, a savagery act is known. In your risk mapping, you did not think of these children. And to think that this government inherited what is known as the Safe School Initiative. Under it, that she girls were abducted. And then suddenly we hear that this number of young men were taken from their school. It just shows us to be an unserious country, but it is more so and you know, a, a, a very poor reflection 
of the presidency of uh, President Muhammad Buhari. And I am not one of those Nigerians clapping. I am just rejoicing that these children have not had to go through what Chibo girls and their Charibu have gone through. And the only thing I can say to the government is, whatever you did in order to bring our young boys home, please, Leah Charibu deserves it, and 112 Chibok girls deserve it. There's no other way to put it than to say that this failure has to come to an end. And you seem to be renewing your call, or at least uh, trying to uh, remind us about the Chibo girls, Leah Sharibu, and others. Do you think that these have become the forgotten among us? And if that is the case, what, does that, what are the implications of that? It's a terrible implication. Because you see, the worst thing for me is that this administration refused to declare closure or the lack of it by transparently communicating what the status of Chibok girls of Leah Charibu is. Neither the parents nor the community from which they come or the communities from which they come, because one is Bruno, the other is Yobe, nor the public, meaning Nigerians, have been given any status update on these young women. Now, what we had as a movement from those within the security circle is that majority of our Chibok girls have died and that the, the, just a handful of them are alive. We have written, we have spoken, we have not stopped. <laughs> a lot of the times, you know, Nigerians only follow what they follow, but the movement concerning these girls have been persistent in demanding accountability from the administration of President Buhari concerning the girls. There's been none offered. That's a very terrible thing. Because listen, when Chibok girls were abducted, part of the reason I was visceral about government giving them the justice of rescue was that I didn't want us to set a terrible and dangerous precedent that other children would then be at risk. Because if people think that they can take away our children and there would be no consequence whatsoever, then we have fulfilled what a nasty, brutish, and short society would look like. And so to now see that for us as a people, it's the human life means nothing. We have taking it to zero. And this government has been particular in not showing that sense of respect for the dignity of the Nigerian life. And that's appalling. That the uh, kids, the schoolboys, have been rescued. Uh, the UN mission has actually uh, reminded the Nigerian government to ensure that there is accountability in this case to find out exactly those behind this. Are you confident that there will be accountability, uh, you know, in a way that will get some kind of closure uh, to be sure that those behind this will actually be, be uh, punished? You know, because I am driven by facts, I have to look back in the last seven years or thereabout of this administration, or maybe six and a half, and ask where are the records of accountability of this government to anything? What has it ever been accountable to or accountable for? Because I see none, I wouldn't waste my time imagining that President is going to even tell us in a transparent manner what exactly went down with the Kankara boys. The truth is that there is something not quite adding up on the matter of the abduction of these boys and their release by forces that we have not been clearly told who they really are. There are many clips and there are many names being mentioned. The government is so inconsistent, so so totally changing every, okay. at every twist and turn. You hear a different thing. And that is problematic for public, you know, to have any sense of credibility. Okay.